Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming in Diablo 4. Uber uniques in this game are insane. Most of them are instant equips, but not all of them depending on your class and build. Some require the right build to actually work, and sure they're worth it there, but in many cases you could get an Uber that's not even great for you. Which is a scary thought considering how rare they are, even if they're more viable to get these days. So of the seven Uber uniques, What's the rankings of these? What is the best and worst of the seven? The problem with that very question is it's actually quite dependent on your class. Some are better for others and worse for others too. That means we need to take a look at every class and compare and form a real average. We'll start though by looking at each unique, what it actually does. Then I'll talk about my average rankings from looking at the rankings for all the classes. But as a reminder, every uber unique is insane. You just need the right build to make it work properly. Hell, you could use some of them just for their incredible affixes. Let's start with the helms though, firstly, and Ariel's Visage. This uber unique provides you with a lucky hit chance to trigger a poison nova, and this applies poison damage over 5 seconds to enemies in that area. It comes with all stats, attack speed, lifesteal, which is major, and poison resistance. The poison nova might be something you shun and look more to the impressive lifesteal effect, which is understandable, but in play, it's the poison nova ticks that are very potent with this item, easily reaching over 100,000 and more per tick of damage. And that's happening in AoE in many ticks over 5 seconds. This could be insane for a rogue that's running poison imbuements for example, but this footage here is actually with Josh on his sorcerer and it's still devastating. Combine the concept with the new unique ring, x Fowls, which triggers off the poison dot itself and that's quite the combo. Outside of that main detail though, the attack speed it provides is fantastic and the lifesteal is wonderful. Though in true endgame content, it's clear the lifesteal isn't strong enough to completely carry you. An interesting combo with this could be Temerity, a unique pair of legs that provides a shield as you overheal. But the issue with that is that we're all using Tobalt's Will for the massive DPS benefits of that and you'd have to drop that. So overall, this unique finds itself in a weird spot with great potential but some sacrifices needing to be made. I think it is safe to say though, a rogue would ought to equip this helm, but everyone else would be unlikely to without first changing their build to a common day. The other uber unique helm though is a completely different story. Harlequin Crest aka Shaco is busted. It's easily the strongest, most reliable uber unique in the game that every single class will auto equip in essentially every build. The effect of putting it on is ridiculous. You get a 20% damage reduction flat out and on top of that you get plus 4 ranks to all skills. Absolutely insane for your DPS and also damage reduction and also the utility of that. The affix is a decent too with max life, cooldown reduction, resource gen and all stats. These are handy in their own ways. But straight 20% damage reduction without needing to maintain it like with might or build it up with disobedience. That's so impactful on its own. The raw power that you get from plus 4 ranks to all skills, there's little I can say, it's just obviously the strongest item in the game overall. You get great CDR on your skills, raw power increase, potentially longer effects and so on, so strong. Some classes will benefit with this more than others, it's true, but universally this is an auto equip. Next, let's look at the amulet, the melted heart of Selig. This one provides you with a straight plus 30% maximum resource, which is wonderful for a variety of builds and classes. But now that resource count matters way more whatever build you are, because when you're taking damage, an amount of the resource is drained for every 1% of the life that you would have lost instead. This is like the ultimate damage reduction in the game. Any build that can generate a ton of resources can make themselves ultra tanky. A rogue with inner sight could give themselves 4 seconds of no energy lost, so that's 4 seconds of huge damage reduction. Rob2628 made a recent immortal barbarian build, so there's a lot of potential there in the blood forges. The amulet comes with all stats, core skill damage, damage while healthy and resource gen as great affix for this concept. And while it's tough to lose an amulet slot sure, this is going to be worth it, especially if you're doing the blood forges, which are apparently going to be harder than tier 100s. And even more insane is that devs think we won't be able to complete the highest tier blood forges themselves. They think it's impossible. So insane damage reduction like this amulet might be vital. The next uber unique we should look at though is a strange one. The Ring of Starless Skies is ideal for a build that wants to press just one button for a period of time or always and that's basically against 
what most builds kind of do. Basically, each consecutive cast of a core skill reduces the resource cost of the next core skill by 12%, and that stacks up to 40%. So you're almost halving the resource cost of each core skill being used. Incredible potential there. This is best seen with, say, a Bone Spear build that basically debuffs the enemies, Bone Swords itself up, and then just proceeds to only cast Bone Spears for as long as possible. But many other builds are going to look at this effect and think, that's just too awkward to run. Some of the top Necromancer players using Bone Spear have like four skills on their bars to avoid accidentally pressing anything other than Bone Spear. It comes with good affixes though, crit chance and damage, core skill and lucky hit, ideal for many builds, not just this one. Basically, you'd need to design a build around this concept to make it worth using. But if you're one of the few builds that this actually works for, like Bone Spear, it is incredible. But now let's talk about the three weapons, starting with the incredible Grandfather, the two-handed sword, which is funny because it's just barbarians and necromancers that actually get to use this. Fortunately, it's essentially an instant equip for barbarians and certainly for a bone spear necromancer. It increases your critical strike damage by 100%, which is insane for your DPS. This is part of how Rob2628 landed a ridiculous 1 billion damage on his barbarian in literally one hit. But every necromancer I've seen in the top ranks, they've put Grandfather on as soon as they've got it and run the best build for it, which is of course Bone Spear. It comes with crit strike damage, raw damage, max life, all stats, and even ignores durability loss as a neat perk. But there isn't much more we can say about this. For the two classes that can get it, you want to make use of it. Speaking of swords, the next uber unique is Doombringer, a one-handed sword, so it's available to rogues, necromancers, and barbarians. This one has a lucky at chance to deal shadow damage in AoE, which then applies to surrounding enemies with a debuff. That debuff reduces their damage by 20% for 5 seconds. So if you're already dealing shadow damage, that's fantastic. Take an infinite mist necromancer and that works brilliant there. But the main event really is the massive damage reduction that provides. Another source of 20% DR is fantastic and you can combine it with others, right? Like Might or even Shaco. I could imagine in the Blood Forges that being required to be a tier 25 if the devs are right, but we'll see. Either way, it's a top tier pick for survivability and what I imagine everyone running if their build allows for it. It comes with good affixes and crit strike damage, core skill damage, raw damage, lucky hit chance with heal, which is whatever, but then a massive 40% max life increase, which is big. Consider the max life increase with that new vampiric power, Hemomancy, which scales its damage off your health. Well, that's awesome there. So I think if you've got this one, you're certainly going to run it, especially with how it's only a one hand, so it's less invasive on a build. Finally, though, we have a last uber unique to mention, a Haverian, a staff that's only usable by druids and sorcerers. At face value, it's a bit of a disappointing uber, but it's one that's carried a bit by its affixes. The special effect here grants you a random shrine buff for 20 seconds after you kill an elite, limited to trigger only every 30 seconds. This effect is almost always on then during mob clear and certainly in blood forges where it could be consistently active. Its affixes though increase your damage to crowd control enemies, your raw damage, your attack speed and your crit strike chance, as well as some lucky hit chance to stun. Those numbers are very respectable and really impactful on raw DPS. Imagine it in the blood forges though, being literally damage immune when you're in conduit form or have zero resource cost, always critting. The burst and DPS potential there is big and it might actually make a real difference in Blood Forges. So I actually think this one at face value is lower rated, sure, but the reality is that it has a lot of potential based on RNG. With that look at each uber unique and a little talk on the perks and downsides of them, let's now do what we're here to do and rank them. What's overall best and worst for each class? Well, I've talked this through with both Cotton and Josh, and we think we've got a nice list for all the classes. But here's how it averaged out with us spending six years having me say the same thing in different ways for each class. But we will talk about some specific ones after. So at number seven at the bottom, we have the staff I just mentioned, a Haverian. It's due to the simple fact that only two classes can even use it, right? And between the Druid and Sorcerer, there's a lot that won't even run the staff in many cases. That's not to downplay how impactful the affixes are and the effect has some serious potential, especially in Blood Forges, where you might need those stronger buffs. You might desire that RNG to get conduit multiple times in a row, but at the same time, you might also get greed three times in a row, which is a lot more upsetting. It's very good, but of all the Ubers, 
it's the one with the most awkwardness because of that RNG. Above that though, at number six, it's the Starless Sky Ring. Ultra good for bone spear builds and potentially a few others, but too awkward to run in current meta for most. So it's certainly not a casual slap on. Ring slots are so important right now, especially after the Malignant Rings update. So it's quite hard to justify this slot unless it really works for your build. Next at five though, we have Andariel's Helm. It's a shame that the lifesteal doesn't seem to be an actual 3% based on Josh's testing of this one, but the lifesteal is still very nice to have, especially for your little bit of extra survivability if you don't have the other incredible uniques. What surprises though is just how strong the poison AoE actually is and the potential that it has with x files and a nice lucky hit build is there. It's certainly going to be insane for rogues using poison builds, which is quite popular. And so for them in particular, this will be a lot higher rated. For number four though, it's the awesome Doombringer. Of the three classes that can use it, being Rogue, Necromancer and Barb, I think they'll all happily have this one on. It's a great source of health, which is going to be great for Hemomancy as I mentioned, but then the 20% damage reduction to those you can apply this effect to is huge. The problem is it's not consistent. It's lucky hit based. It might not trigger instantly when you need it to, say in a blood forge where you desperately need that damage reduction so you don't die. But thanks to it being one handed, it should fit into most builds despite that. And number three, it's the insane DPS increase that is the grandfather. And while only Necromancer and Barbarian can actually use this, I think it's an auto quip for pretty much any Barbarian because of how impactful that 100% improved crit damage actually is. And at very least, if you're a Bone Spear Necromancer, you desperately want this weapon. It's that impactful. Other builds, uh, it's a bit more awkward, but the potential is still there. You might sacrifice a couple aspect slots to make it work, but I could imagine it working with Blood Surge and Lance builds. And I'd still like to test it with, say, an Infinite Mist build all the same. But that brings us to second place, which goes to the massive damage reducing amulet, the Melted Heart of Selig. What can I say? It drains your resources instead of life. That will be game changing in difficult environments, which yeah, we don't have right now, but in the Blood Forges, it might be meta. It might be the most important uber unique with that in mind. But lastly, that obviously brings us to the top, where Shaco is of course the top spot, undisputable really. This is the only uber unique that every class and every build will likely immediately equip. It's pretty cool that that even exists in the game. As I explained in the highlight though, the raw DPS potential of plus four to every skill is great, but it's also the other benefits of like lowering other skill CDs, improving CC potency, or the obvious straight 20% damage reduction for even wearing it. Disobedience takes a bit to get going. Might is something you have to maintain. This is just constant. So those are our averages. Even though we have Ahavarian at the bottom of your averages, again, I want to remind you that the potential of this staff is huge. With good RNG, it could actually be really impactful in Bloodforge pushing. If you can repeatedly get conduit after conduit buff, making you damage immune, it could make normally impossible clears suddenly possible, and that shouldn't be ignored or understated. The Starless Skies Ring, while lower rated on my list, is going to be a top pick for a few niche builds that can run it properly. Bone Spear is basically the best Necromancer build and that is one of the best uber uniques that it can get. At the end of the day though, all the ubers are really impactful and worth making a build if you actually get one. But that brings us to the end of the video. I hope this was informative to you on the ubers and maybe you learned something you didn't know or you can now contextualize the ubers better if you do get one of them and now know kind of how it works and what to do with it. For now though, I've been Hollow, you've been you, good luck with your drops and I'll see you next time. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world our stage Is, uh, goodbye